Woof with WDWNT Play, and we are here with Chum and Matthew Robert Davey. Yes, uh, we're here at Magic Kingdom, and we just wanted to see how you're doing. We wanted to ask you a couple questions about Lorcana, about art in general, and Fantastic. just about Disney. Yeah, great. Tom, I'm gonna let you take it away first. All right, thank you. Uh, this first time at Disney World? First time at Disney World, But yes. you've been to Disneyland in Anaheim and, and Disneyland Paris. And Paris, yes, yeah. yeah. So how? It's huge. It's this huge. Is huge, yeah. Yeah, you get your stats in. That sure. lake, you, you arrived over a lake. Yeah. We went over the boat. <laughs> we came <laughs> over, the yeah. Moon. And I was like, okay, this, this, is, this is different. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been fantastic so far. Um, the theming, um, it's just, yeah, it's just incredible. Incredible experience. That's great. Um, yeah, and I've been Disney fan my whole life, so I always wanted to come here, so really, Great that the game, doing work for the game now has brought me here, so really good. Well, that's where I want to start. I mean, you're an artist, mm -hmm. and I think there's so many people who are Disney fans. That's one of the things that inspires them to become artists. Is that where it starts for you? Is there Disney animation in that, the beginning of your passion for artistry? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, the first film I think I had given to me when I was born was um, The Little Mermaid VHS, mm -hmm. and wore that out. No, completely. A VHS is it's. Oh ah, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes. that now I don't know anymore. And uh, and and yeah, and I would copy the cover of that VHS cover like just religiously, and then every every birthday or Christmas we'd get like you know, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and um, like Fo uh, Fox and the Hound. I was just like, oh yeah, for sure, I was obsessed with that movie. And just the pause, you know. I think we had a VHS player that had pause then, because not not everyone did, and then you could actually freeze frame, like press through the film, which would ruin the movie, like ruin the tape, but I would just like, get a piece of paper onto the screen and just- Screen, yeah, oh, that's I was, do the same thing. And um, yeah, and then my whole like trajectory was like, oh, I, I want to do this for a living. And people were like, what, what do you mean? Like, I think as a kid, even, I got that it was a, it was a career, but yeah. all the adults around me were like, no, no, you, you, can't, you can't do that. Like that's there's just... names at the end of this movie. These people <laughs> did something. Yeah, right? yeah. and um, and yeah, so I've basically wanted to do 2D, 2D animation my entire life yeah. um, at a Disney level. And then graduated just about the time they decided they weren't going to do that anymore. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> on, on, on a wide scale. Yeah. And then, but I, I did it anyway. I did it for a few years um, in the UK industry. And then just wanted to draw, draw more, illustrate and do different things. And then just gradually went into games and visual development, um, art direction. I and mean, I'd never really done just full illustration. Obviously, you do stuff for um, for CG films and, and and TV, but it's usually for a purpose to like explain things. Yeah. It's not usually to like, hang on a wall. And then um, during the pandemic, I just you know um, started doing a bit of personal work, and then had a DM saying, "Hey, we have a project. Do you want to involve Disney characters? Do you want to be involved?" And I was like, "Sure, let's go for it." I had no idea what it was. And now, but what, it's Disney, right? And you get to yeah, of course. Cool. Like, yeah. get to tick that off the list, and little did I know it was gonna that list is gonna continue to grow. But um, yeah, it's been just nearly three three years now, and it's been it's been great because it was during the pandemic, so it really was a lifeline. I got yeah. to do it from home, uh, work with a great team, and then I had no idea it was become what it's become. Yeah. And now seeing people like. Just don't mind them. <laughs> <laughs> but people just, just, just see people like just really like just they love the game. Not just the cards, but they love the game. And then I just it's been overwhelmingly positive. Like in real life, I'm like fingers crossed. I've had n not one bad experience. Yeah. And um, there are TCG fans and there are Disney fans, and that kind of like cross section and that Venn diagram of people yeah. are like just like the the best people. <laughs> and um, it's been really great. And then coming. To, um, to Florida now and just be around the parks. We've done a few, you know, drops and signed some cards and hidden them and kids have found them and everyone's super excited. It's just, it's really fun. Well, the thing about Disney fans, right, is I think we're accustomed to appreciate, like we're, we're art connoisseurs in a way, at oh, least yeah. this very particular kind of art. Yeah. Um, so we're very appreciative of that, right? Like like our heroes are, you know, Disney animators. So who, who for yeah. you were those heroes? Who were the names at the end of those movies that you uh, idolized? I mean, the first roster was Glenn Keane and Mark Henn, you know. Yeah. Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, James Baxter, of course. And then, but then as, you know, when the VHS was finally, we got released from the vault and we got, you know, um, 
Sleeping Beauty and 101 Dalmatians. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is a whole different, this is something else. And then, you know, Mark Davis and Milk Hall are like my two top. And I think it goes between just like, I love Mark's design and draftsmanship. Also, Milk was great, but his, his animation, like they're just, it's, I think James Baxter's up there. I think he like matches them. Like obviously people have their own opinions, but um, it's just, yeah, like, and having to do, <laughs> having to do characters that um, they have done is uh, not an easy task. It's, it's daunting, no? Yeah, it's like I have like this kind of <laughs> shadow thing, you're not doing it as well. Like, I know, I know I'm doing the best I can, but. Um, yeah, I mean, how many millions of people know <laughs> these characters you're oh, drawing? Yeah, yeah. That, that's gotta be a tremendous pressure. It, it's, it is, but like I'm also a fan as well, so if it looks off, I know it looks off. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, that doesn't look right. And then... So you're your own worst critic? Yeah, I think yeah. most artists are, but then there's illustrating and then there's illustrating Disney stuff on model. Like, yeah. we've seen a lot of Disney art just where they don't intend to be on model, it's for mm. different things, it's for merch, and they do like fun things with them. Yeah. But when it came to this, this project, I'm like, no, they have to look and be 100% correct. Yeah. Um, and I think... On the whole, <laughs> on the whole, I think I've done a decent job of like capturing the spirit of these characters because uh, my, my name's on the bottom of the card, so if it goes wrong, I'm the yeah. one that <laughs> gets to blame. Yeah. So, um, so it's been really fantastic. They know, they know who to find. Yeah, well, they know. <laughs> but um, yeah, set one, I got to do a lot of villains, which is fantastic. The Evil Queen, like just completely different styles. I like, had the Evil Queen, um, Hades, which is already a fantastic design. It's just, it's completely perfect in its own way, and then to get the task to try and like, not improve it, but to change it. I'm like, ooh, yeah. don't know, like, not changing his face, like nothing like, it's perfect, I'll change the outfit. And they're like, yeah, it's cool, cool. Um, so that was fun. And then now in set two, I, the images have been released, whereas I got to do characters like the Queen of Hearts, who's you know from a completely different era. Mm -hmm. And then um, Rhea, a CG character, like, like Elsa, they, they have their own like, um, their own complexities of translating them into a 2D form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was really fun, and I get to watch the movies. You know, I'm, I'm watching them on Disney Plus, and I'm just like, you know, just constantly watching them as I'm drawing them, and um, just falling in love with the, the sh movies again because I hadn't seen. I watched right when it came out during the pandemic, and then I got it for set two, and I was like, oh, watch it again. I was like, oh, completely missed this in the first watching. Yeah. So I haven't watched some of the newer ones as much as like, you know, there's no worn out VHS, but. Um, but yeah, and the, the, the Beast and uh, Gas, I've done quite a few of those, and uh, I think the card hasn't been released, but the image has, so I think this is safe. There's a banner of it. Oh, Shere Khan, I can say, like, I did oh, Shere Khan. Nice. And that, that, that's just, that is just the most difficult thing to do. And oh, yeah? I very, very much, like, I'm not using a frame from the movie. Like, I think if you look at all the cards I've done, I'm pretty much, like, I'm not using a screen grab, I'm not using, um, unless, when it comes to Elsa, and they're like, "Could you please use this pose?" I'm like, "Of course, if you want me to, I'll do it." But for the for everything else, I was like, "No, it, like, you get one chance to, you know, do something with these characters, and I want it to be as unique as possible. So have a unique piece of artwork that people could then, you know, see and collect." And I think if you're a big enough fan like I am, you recognize, you know, when other things are like screen grabs and stuff like that. So you, you know that. So I think the reason why the game is so popular is because people. I think people thought it was going to be screen grabs from the movie, and they're like, oh, it's completely original artwork. Fantastic. Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, that's what makes it for me, right? I'm not, I think everyone watching knows, I'm not necessarily a card game guy, though. I was pretty big into Pokemon as a kid. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really a card game guy, but I'm a Disney guy, mm -hmm. and I love the animated feel, especially the 2D stuff. Yeah. Um, so, like, seeing the characters in a new way mm -hmm. and, and carefully curated by new artists, that's exciting for me, right? And so that's... I know we did an unboxing and people, some of the card game people were upset that I announced the names of the artists as I read the cards. And to me, that just blew my mind. I was like, but this is so much love went into yeah. this and care. And this is awesome to see this new art. So mm -hmm. um, they may not be watching this interview, but the art appreciators <laughs> are. I mean, it's, it's part of the reason why I, I play Magic, but I haven't really since the pandemic because run out of people to play with. So I played in yeah. the arena, but I jumped back in recently just to collect because, you know, Eldra the Wilds of Eldraine, there's like just some of the artwork in these games is just incredible. Yeah. And then the most exciting part of, about this process as well with Lokana is that, you know, we had, had NDAs, we were in isolation. I didn't get to see, I got to see 
a few of Nick's cards for the style guide mm. and things like that. But then when I got to see like artists like Cookies Beast and her Tinkerbell, I was like, oh well, like this mm. is like, I was like, oh, I gotta <laughs> level up. Yeah. And um, yeah, just seeing other people's like the interpretations of the characters mm -hmm. and just the level of the quality of like people around the world. But we all did this from our homes, our offices, our bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there. There's artists from Europe, you know, UK, which is not Europe anymore. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, we've got you know, Amer America, all over the like all over the world. There's, everyone's come for their love of Disney, and then I think Ravensburger just announced that you know it's coming to like ten more countries. So yeah. the game is going to be global, mm -hmm. hopefully as soon as possible. And then people get to experience these characters, and, and everyone has their own favorite characters, their list. Like I have my list of characters that I want, and I've kind of emailed it. And like, when they license or when they get those <laughs> characters, hopefully I get them. But um, but yeah, it's just been, it's been just, yeah, it's, just, it's like a childhood, like, goal. Like, oh, like, cool, I get to show, like, my mum, or, you know, show people in my life, like, hey, do you know those doodles I was doing that you kind of, like, yeah. shout at me for, like, I'm making money of them, I get to go to Florida and go to Disney World and, and meet amazing people. It's, um, the, it's the mark that you've made it, right? I think even, like, Disney animators in the 30s and 40s always said that, I, I worked for Walt Disney. That's oh, yeah. where you had to be, right? So I mean, and we can't do that. So it's the next best thing. Really, you're kind of working for. Walt Disney. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's his company. I mean, <laughs> when, when you get those characters that were around when when Walt was was running the show, those yeah. are the ones where I'm like, okay, this has to this has to be a hundred percent. And they're, and they're not <laughs> they're not the easiest. Like you know, styles have changed, and, yeah. and the Evil Queen. I've done her a few times, and you know, she she's got a, a face where you have to nail it. Like. Yeah. If you draw that eye wrong, it just looked weird. So it's, yeah. you have, you don't have that much room for error with the, with a lot of these characters, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just been a dream. Yeah. That's great. So I wanted to ask uh, your your history with TCGs and just like card games. You said you were you were a Magic person. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was born in the '90s, so like I was six when Pokemon came out. So uh -huh. you know they had my money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, every every odd job, walking dogs, mowing lawns, you know, paper routes. It was just like I would run. I think you know, it was like two pounds, like two ninety nine dollars. Like yeah. you know, I would as soon as I had you know two coins, I would run to the shop and like get get a deck and uh, get a booster pack and rip it open. And some you know older teenager would come and like trade me <laughs> and then tell me this one was rare and like give away something. Give it away, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I still have a bunch of them in horrible condition. So they're not worth anything, but they are sentimental. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, so I, I remember playing it not very much. I was uh -huh. just a collector. And then with Magic, it just, the art, I got I got into it for the artwork. The artwork is yeah. so good. And then, um, yeah, it just, it was great to play with play with people and play with friends and definitely. do like, do like Commander and, you know, um, just like four player games and things like that. It was, it was just fantastic. And then kind of had a lull mm -hmm. and then, I got to play Locana for the first time at Birm Birmingham Game Expo. There we go, yeah. Board Game Expo. And uh, I was like, because I knew Ryan was involved in the game. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, So this is like a real game. Yeah. <laughs> and then I played. I was like, oh, this is a good game. Oh, great. Like, there's nothing worse. Like, I, we, Every artist will tell you in this industry. Sometimes you, know, you work, you, you pull your heart and soul into something and the, the end product just isn't great or yeah. the show's not good or it's not well received. and. But like your part of the jigsaw is great, and yeah. other people's are. Just when when you step back, it just doesn't make a finished image. Whereas Definitely. to be a part of something where people get it and people like it and people play it. And like mm -hmm. I played the first game was like a demo game, and it was like um, like a four year old dude and his uh, his niece, and she was like six or something, and they both got it in like ten minutes. I got it, and yeah. we were playing, and then I got to play Orion a few times, and um, I won. I think I won one. <laughs> Um, with, like a, with like a dummy deck, and I was like, <laughs> yes. But um, I was like, oh great, this is it's so cool to be, to have all this go towards something that, you know, the, the artwork might attract people to the game, but it mm -hmm. live and dies by the mechanics. By the mechanics, and the mechanics. correct. And it's just streamlined, it's so good, it's like so easy to learn, and there's so much room to expand and to like cement it and just make it more complex, but not too difficult. There's, there's just so many ways they can go. Yeah. And Seeing what I've seen for that, like, it's just like, okay, cool, they're doing it yeah. right. So it's really exciting to be a part of something that people enjoy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. We have to pick two inks. Oh, okay. What two inks are you playing with? Well, I bought um, 
Couldn't find it in stores, so <laughs> my partner got me one off eBay. Um, it's real. It's not. It's not fake. It's not fake. Um, uh, the booster was inside it as well. I didn't expect the booster. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. But it was like you know five five pound more. Bit a bit scalp. Oh, five's not bad. Not not bad. <laughs> five's but, not uh, bad at all. Mine's amethyst. No matter what conversion. <laughs> right. Currency five. Oh. Five is not bad right now. Uh, I tried my local game shop. They were like, no. Yeah. They almost laughed me out the store. Um, but uh, amethyst and amber. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, so I've got that deck and then we had a few extra cards and we just kind of supplemented it. I do not have the cards I actually need to make uh -huh. that deck, you know, competitive. But um, I've won. I haven't lost with it yet. Yeah. Um, but he, he's smirking over there. <laughs> it might have, it might have a less with me being good and more to do with him not being that great. <laughs> but, um, but then he did complain. So we swapped decks and his was uh, steel and blue. Sapphire? Sapphire, that's it. And I uh, still won. But um, yeah, it's just I'm with Magic again. I'm more of like a like a is it black red. Okay. I, I very much you know go hard, go fast. Yeah. And then um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go for an amethyst red. Okay. Yeah. Um, which seems to be with what a lot of competitors. A lot of competitors decks are playing going with. For. Yeah. But um, but for set two, so we've seen these cards get announced and people get really excited about other colors and. That's the, that's the, you think that you've got your colors like locked in, and then you see it like some kind of mechanic or some kind of like combo. You're like, oh, yeah. I need to do that. Yeah. And um, playing like with, with magic, I, like I play with arena, so you can try mm. loads of different things. So um, I think I'll have a few a few decks, but right now yeah. it's amethyst and amber. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm having a blast with it. Yeah. Yeah. The fun thing about it is is the different characters that they're yeah. coming out with, the different you know just uh, inks that they're gonna be kind of going into. Like, I've been, from the get-go, I've been Amethyst. Mm -hmm. Rise of Floodborne, still Amethyst. Okay. So I'm, I'm still good for the second okay. chapter as well. <laughs> There's a lot of cool Steel cards I've seen yes. coming up. Because Steel, I think it's been underappreciated and there's some amazing artwork with Steel. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what it is. Like, everyone will gravitate towards one and then the next set they'll just be balanced and then mm -hmm. there'll be another set that comes and you're like, oh, I need to, I need to switch it up. So, Definitely. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get like, you know, enough to make a few decks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. No pleasure. We're gonna see you this weekend at Miami TCG convention. Yeah. Yep. So if you that. guys wanna get more coverage of Miami TC, TC woo. It's hard to say, it's hard to say. It's especially hard to with say. The, especially with the brakes. <laughs> if you want some more coverage of Miami TCG convention this weekend, stick with us here at WDWNT Play. And we'll see you there? Yeah, absolutely. See there you there. There we go. Cheers, man. <laughs>